What are your first impressions of the ELMS paddock and LMP2 field? <laughs> <laughs> I love how you pause it to me. The first impressions of the ELMS paddock um, have been very impressive, very professional. You know, um, we're here in beautiful Paul Ricard and uh, it's been very well organized, very well set up, especially given the current situation with Corona. So obviously it's got a different vibe to the people that normally know the series, but to us, um, everybody's been very, very cool with us. And um, you know, we know it's one of the most competitive championships in the world. So we're under no illusions as to what it's gonna be like on track. But so far, only, only positive, I think. Yeah, nothing really to add, I think. Um, well, I was racing here actually on the same weekend last year, so 2019 yeah. with the Formula Regional. And the races were incredible, cool and interesting. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be an amazing track for the races. You have many corners to overtake and, and to fight. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting, and especially with the two test, test days coming up now. Um, yeah, really looking forward to it. I think we're all very excited to finally get going, start the, the racing season. Um, of course, it's one of the most competitive championships. You have F2, a winner of last year, very, very strong names. So I think it's going to be a tough competition. But um, as a team, I think we are, we are here to learn as much as, as we can in the prologue and hopefully put everything together to, to start the year uh, with the right foot um, on, on Sunday. Okay. How much time have you had in the Orica 07 before this week? So um, we, we all, the three of us, we, we tested in Bahrain for the first time, the LMP2 car uh, last year. Then Catherine and me, we, we had a test in, in Alcañiz, two days. So Sofia has a little bit less, less track time. I think we'll, we'll make up for it uh, in the prologue, but um, we're very excited to, yeah. to start the season. Um, Catherine, you have raced in LMP2 back in 2016 in the US. How different is the Orica 7 to the cars you've driven in the past? I have, um, I've driven in prototypes, let's say, in the past, especially in America where I've had the biggest part of my career now to date. Um, but when I was driving in the, the prototypes, it was actually a Delta Wing. So I bet you can all imagine how very different that car was yeah. to drive. It actually drove very much like an Indy car, like an open wheel car. So similar to this, but we, we developed it over a period of, I think, three years to get to that standard. So it was a really neat learning experience. I learned a lot about um, engineering from it and what the car needs and set up and developing a car. And it, it was fun, but I don't know how much of it will translate to right now. And, and since then, I've obviously been predominantly driving a GT car, which is very different. Um, so it's going to be a matter of switching my brain back onto driving something with a little bit of downforce and uh, obviously quite a lot of power. So I'm excited because these kind of cars, they give you goosebumps, you know, they make you really passionate about what we came to do. And we all started in, in single seaters in open wheel cars. And so we all have that feeling in the, the seat that we want to drive uh, fast with a lot of downforce. So it's going to be pretty awesome, I think. Yeah. Um, Sofia, unfortunately, you won't be here this weekend for the race at Le Castellet due to other commitments in FIA F3. Will you be getting extra time in the Oreca during the two day ELMS test to make up for the fact that your teammates will be racing the car this weekend? Well, um, yeah, as I'm doing a double program this year with F3 and ELMS, um, I'm pretty busy now actually because of COVID-19, everything got shifted yeah, to the second half of the year. And yeah, I have a race in Hungaroring Ring coming up this weekend. So I sadly cannot be here in Porvika. Um, and yeah, also sadly, I'm just able to do one day of testing tomorrow. Um, yeah, the engineer told us that I can drive a little bit more tomorrow just to get some time in the car and to get used to it, as I also missed some two test days in, in March. Um, but yeah, I mean, them two are racing this weekend and I think they have to prepare and be quick and, and work out the setup so they are happy. Um, and yeah, I mean, at some point I'll hopefully have some time in the car and also get used to it, but I'll cross my fingers for my two teammates. <laughs> um, Tatiana. You have a lot of single seat racing experience. 
how different is it going to be to race a Le Mans prototype with your two teammates? Yeah, I mean, I think it's an it's a exciting new chapter for me, for the team as well. Um, obviously, a lot of single-seated experience, I think it's always helpful, but um, I think there are a lot of things that I need to learn as well as a driver to, you know, you, uh, you, you've been asked to do uh, fuel safe, uh, the tires, a lot more time in the car, um, so a lot of traffic, which uh, with very different kind of speeds. So I think uh, hopefully all the experience that I bring from single seaters will help, but for sure it's a, it's a long learning curve and um, it's good we have also Catherine who has a lot of experience in um, in this type of racing, Sofia doing F3 as well, uh, very young as well and, and uh, so it's, it's a good combination and hopefully uh, we can learn as much as, as we can before the big uh, 24 hours of Le Mans uh, later on the year. Yeah. Um, speaking of, of it, uh, we have three ELMS races before the big one, the 24 hours of Le Mans. What are you looking forward to the most about Le Mans and what are your expectations for this race? Well, I think we've, we've done the 24 hours virtual, which I think was a, was a great start to get to know the team, get to know each other. Uh, of course, it's the biggest race in the world, so you want to do really well. And we're preparing everything uh, for them all, uh, let's say. So hopefully we can, we can be fighting uh, for the podium. Of course, that's what we want to be. Uh, but taking it step by step and learning everything in the next couple of rounds. Yeah, I also think that like this, the setup we have, like with all of three of us, um, Catherine having a lot of experience in, in endurance racing and yeah, us two coming more from single seaters, more like knowing, uh, trying to get the perfect lap out and having Signa Tech or Richard Bull racing behind us who have a bunch of experience in endurance racing who won Le Mans um, several times and who've been driving in WEC but also in ELMS many years. Um, I think we have a great team behind us um, working hard with us to, to get be prepared as much as possible for Le Mans. Um, and yeah, as, as you said, we have three rounds coming up in the ELMS championship, which will help us to learn the car, to learn the key facts about endurance racing and to, to work with the team to get the car as good as possible. I think I can't really add so much, but I've done, as the girl said, I, I've done a lot of endurance racing. I've done a lot of 24-hour races at Daytona and so on, and I've never done Le Mans. So for me, it's as much, um, you know, one of those bucket list races that's eluded me, that evokes so much emotion in everybody. Whenever you say Le Mans, everybody gets goosebumps and they, you know, as a driver, it's one of the races that you really want to not only compete in it, but, but win. And I think we have a legitimate chance with the team that we're with, you know, with Richard Mill Racing and Signatech. They've won Le Mans several times now, and I think that um, we couldn't be learning from, from better people. So it's definitely an exciting time for us. It's a different time, obviously, with Corona and, and what's going on, and we were panicking for a while that we might not get to go to Le Mans. So we still cross fingers. <laughs> And, uh, you know, for us, it's a, a lifetime experience that we're really looking forward to. Um, you are being supported by the FIA Women in Motorsport. How important to you as a driver is this initiative? The FIA Women in Motorsport initiative uh, has been a game changer in a lot of female drivers' uh, careers. You know, I've been there since the very beginning um, when it was just... Um, an idea that they had and and it's taken a while to really gain momentum but now it's completely different to how it was 10-15 years ago where there are so many more opportunities now like this is a great example you know the FIA Women in Motorsport has been pushing for so long very hard with Michelle Mouton and Kathy Muller Erlecher and uh, it's it's the opportunities that have been created, but also the organization around them with the support. So young drivers, young girls have somewhere they can go for advice, for um, career opportunities. And I just think that 
it's great to be a young female driver now because you will have that ladder and you'll have that step. And in a way, I wish I was Sophia's age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I think there's not so much to add. Um, but I mean, um, I think it's important that women in our sport get support and that we if you're five year old or if you're 40 year old you just need support because it's a men's world kind of and to fight against them is not always that easy so if you have someone like Michel Moutor who who is a yeah kind of legend in our sport um, and also Cathy who has done so many races in her life and really knows how to drive a car on the limit um, and if you ha get the chance to, to get their support and to get their tips and their help to make you quicker but also get yeah opportunities like like Catherine said, um, it's it's awesome, and um, I think they're trying their best to make it as easy as possible for women and to help as much as possible, and and that's yeah something I think every single girl in the motorsport is, is thankful for. Yeah. Yeah, I'm proudly also a member of the FIA Women in Motorsport Commission for a few years now, um, and I think I've seen also the progress when I arrived to Europe. Uh, there were still very few women in, in motorsport and the last couple of years it has changed a lot so to, to have the opportunity to be with a great team with the FIA support and to showcase uh, women and to show them that this is an option for them I think that's exactly what we need um, and to start supporting the, the young girls in karting the different initiatives that they have created in the last couple of years is a step forward and hopefully this will bring uh, more more women in the sport in the near future yeah. and uh, last question what will be your goal this season in this highly competitive LMP2 field well I think we are all very ambitious and of course we we want to win we are here to I think we've given a great opportunity we reach Army racing team a great uh, support and technical support from from Signatech so I think we're giving great tools and uh, we want to be fighting on top uh, with with the best out there yeah yeah, not so much to add. Um, I think, yeah, showing good races, um, proving that women can be as quick as men and that we can also beat them. Um, and, of course, have fun, get better, learn from the mistakes we do and, and, and just enjoy it with the team and, yeah, have fun this year. I think that's a very good point. Having fun, you know, sometimes eludes you because you're so focused on the ultimate goal of winning that you forget to enjoy it and you forget to take a step back and go, hey, look, we're in the south of France and we get to drive an awesome race car for an awesome sponsor, for an awesome team. And um, I think, obviously, we want to win. We're all driven to win. It's why we wake up every morning. We want to go racing. We want to win. But also we realize that it's not that easy. You know, we're not just going to walk out there and just wipe the floor with everybody the first time out. So we're realistic that um, in order to do that, we need to be perfect. And in order to be perfect, you need to learn and practice. And, um, you know, endurance racing, one small mistake can cost you everything. And it's a long race. And so we just need to get the experience and the knowledge that we don't make any mistakes and we keep building on it and we keep improving. Because as long as you're improving, I think you're going in the right direction. So obviously the ultimate goal is to win and, and to get there. We just need to keep doing everything as perfect as we can.